Hi, this video is to show using Quilter's Creative Touch five beginnings. We're going to do a simple pantograph. So start by touching that. I've got to set the safe area. So I'll move it as far back and to the left and still be on my backing and touch top left. And then I will move it all the way forward and to the right and still be on the backing and say bottom right. So now we're ready to measure the width. So we're gonna touch the yellow ruler and with QCT5 there is a a new feature. Um, so I'm going to be showing you that and when you first move your machine to where you want the stitching to begin on the left you are going to move it your needle to where it will align with where the top stitch of your first row will be, whether it's a partial row or full row. Where, what, wherever your top stitch will be, that's where you want your needle aligned with. And then um, as far as the vertical alignment with wherever you want your um, left stitches to begin. So so that's um, a very important with with this particular placement with version 5. So since this is a Quilts for Kids and I'll be using the backing for the binding, I'm, I'm leaving my needle inside of the edge instead of outside. So, so I'm going to put it, let's see, I'm going to put it about right there and I'm going to touch that left side. Now when I move it over to the right edge, I don't have to keep it straight and I don't have to move it up to the top. Just end it with wherever I would want the far right stitches to align with. And so that's all I have to do there and then touch the right. And before applying measurement, there's one more thing I want to do and that is to touch this black sewing machine. It'll ask me if the needle is up. Yes, it is. And now it is moving to the top center of my quilt. And this will be where the top stitches will eventually hit. And so now I need to mark that spot. And I could do a single stitch. Um, I could do a, a placement with a marker. But for the moment, um, I'm just going to... Put this this is a this is that painters tape and I've put a dot there so I'm putting it so that it is directly under okay hopefully I didn't tape down the thread and now I'm going to say apply measurement okay we're going to eventually need this spot later on Let me get my thread out okay so now now my um, my width has been set and I need to do my height and it is still based on no larger than what the throat of your machine will allow and based on when you get close to the end and if it's a very large quilt it's built up on the take-up rail and it's taken away a little bit of that height so With this Quilts for Kids, I don't want a partial row at the bottom, so I've done the math, and if I have 14.6, then I won't need a partial row, and I'm, and I'm going to choose a design that's not nested, so that will, be, that will work for me. So now I need to select my pattern. Okay, I've selected my pattern. This is called Boeing, B-O-I-N-G by Ann Bright. And I'm only going to use one row because this is such a big design. And if I do options, Pano Stacker is already selected. I can say okay. Now I can kind of get an, an idea of, of how big the circles are going to be. Let's see if I do four that looks pretty jumble so I'm going to take it back to three and I need to save it so I'm going to save it in working pantos never heard of Boeing Boeing and we'll just say test and we'll say enter 
and save. And now this has been saved. And there is an, a newer feature with version 5. We won't be showing it um, how it's exactly used, but it's the fit feature, which if you were nesting, that's um, where you would nest very easily, but we're not going to go into that. So um, another feature that is new to get used to, where you used to just have quilt, now you can place as a single pattern or sew in zones. So for this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and select sew in zones. And it always asks you, would you like to save this zone sewing session? Um, we're going to say no because one, it's beginnings and we're on a rolling rail frame. If you were on a hoop frame or a, yeah, where you're shifting your fabric, then zones become much more important. So you'd want to say yes, but here you want to say no. And now we want to go into zone manager. So this is a new thing. And it gives you this warning, letting you know if you had already placed your zone for stitching, that by going into Zone Manager, you would need to replace it. But we haven't done that yet. So yes, we still wish to open Zone Manager. And on this Zone Scale Percent, I have a Q21, so the height is 95. If you have a Q14 Plus or a Q15, you would touch this height and change it to 90 and say, okay. But um, a 21 is a 95, and you want to have the width 100. So you have some choices over here. The first one is zone placement. So we're going to touch that by default. Um, it is, it's got that center marked. So that's where we're going to use the mark that we made when we were using the yellow ruler. If we were to select four point, I'm going to go ahead and do this just to show you what happens. So we're going to go ahead and say okay for now, but we'll come back. So now you're very familiar if you were using version 4, the corner placement. So if, if I were going to use this, then I would move my needle up here and to wherever I wanted that corner to be. And I wouldn't be using that mark I had made with this. I would just move this and I would touch that left corner. And now these other four corners are grayed out and that lets you know they have not been placed. And you can move your needle if you want over to the far right and, and, and tap on there to, to select that right corner also to place it. You could do the same for um, one or both of the lower corners. Um, you can place one, two, three, or four corners. It doesn't matter. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. And once you do it, then you're, if, you, if I were to select A, well, I'll just go ahead and do it. Then you see the lock width shows up. And, and so the width that was set back in the Panto screen is going to be used. So literally, all I had to set was just A. But we're going to go back into Zone Manager and say, yes, we still want to go back in there. And we are going to tap on that and use the Zone Placement Center. And that's where we'll be using that center mark to, to place our first zone. And, and what it's going to do <clears throat> is it'll after, after um, a zone finishes stitching, then it's going to go to the center bottom of that. So you'll see a little red one. That's talking um, about zone one. And with beginnings, that's all you have is zone one. It can be one row or it can be two rows. And then once you stitch it, then you're ready to stitch zone one again. If you had pro version, then you would be able to tap through all your zones and know how many times you would advance your quilt. But, um, but we'll just only ever have one. And then the next um, selection is, is zone start position. But by default with beginnings, it's going to start from the left. And then you have... Um, three selections down here. By default, continuous is selected, but if I touch it, it says sewing direction uniform. That means every row would begin on the left and end on the right and stop. If I select back and forth, then it's going to sew from left to right 
and then do a jump stitch down and start the second row um, stitching from right to left. If I select continuous, then it's going to stitch from left to right and then it's going to stitch a straight line down and right to left. Now, since it's beginnings, that's all it can do is just the two rows. If you had ProVersion, then it would keep going for as much as the safe area would allow. But um, So that's really the, your big difference there between this second choice and this third choice is whether or not you want a jump stitch on the far right or whether you want a straight line. And because this is Quilts for Kids and I'm... Um, staying within the edges, I'm actually going to choose that second choice. I don't want to stitch to go down the far right. So now I'm going to say OK. And then this will change to that center marker. So now I need to move my needle over this. Alright, so that's where I marked it. And now I'm going to touch this. And that lets it know that's the top center mark. Okay, I also need to go into settings. And I'm going to say a medium speed tie off count. I'm going to say four. Um, and this is the toggle of whether you want back and forth stitches to lock at the beginning and end or little micro stitches. So I've chosen that. Um, I've chosen automatic bobbin pull. And I'm going to use 11 stitches per inch. So I'm going to say, OK. If I go into optimize, there's nothing to optimize. It's going to start with the green dot over here, just have that one stitching, and then stop over on the end. So um, I'm just going to say, OK, because I don't need that. And in options, um, there's nothing here that if I wanted to see the grid, I could, I could select that. Um, so we're just going to say OK at this point. So now I'm ready to pull the bobbin. So I'm going to go ahead and get it kind of near where it would be. And I'm going to say pull bobbin. Because up there in settings, I made sure automatic bobbin pull was off. So, so now I'm going to say pull bobbin. And yes, the needle's up. And I used pins on the side because I didn't want to have to take out a basting stitch. So um, I could say move away or move back. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to say single stitch. And it's taking that stitch. And got my, my bobbin stitch pulled up now. And I'm going to say so because I'm ready to go. So once this row has stitched, then we'll be back and I will show you what to do when the row finishes stitching because um, you actually um, mark your center placement before you, um, before you say you're finished. So that'll be something new. So we'll be back in a minute. The second row has completed quilting, so now it's time to pull the bobbin. And at this point, I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to say take a single, I'm, I'm going to say release carriage, and I'm going to move the machine back, grab the thread, and then come back over that spot and I'm going to say single stitch and then I'm going to move the machine back and I'm actually going to bury these so I'm leaving myself a um, little room little thread here that I'll have room to do that so I've clipped the upper one and let's see I want to clip this near the near the bottom there and I want to clip the one that's pulling freely okay so now I have my tails that I can bury later okay so now I'm gonna say back 
And at this point, I say finished zone and proceed to next zone. And, and this is where you'll always see zone one because that's all there, all there is. So yes, the needle is up. So now it's gonna go to the center. And it's going to the center bottom of this design. And there's several choices that you can use to mark that spot. So I could take a single stitch or I could place a sew mark or pull the bobbin. Um, and then I wanna show you what this is. This very center is where that stitch is. So it's letting you know where it is in relation to where the stitches around that center point will be. And that's if you have a piece of tape, you will know if it's going to sew across it or not, if you're using a, a, a one inch um, piece of tape. So um, because this is a course for kids and it has to be washed before um, it can it can be given. I'm okay to mark on this quilt. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm putting this directly underneath there. Sometimes it's hard to tell with these glide feet. So, all right. So that's directly underneath the needle right now. And I'm going to say continue. And it's going to go crazy because it thinks that I haven't marked anything because I didn't use any of these. But I am absolutely sure that I'm ready. So I'm going to say yes. Okay, so now I'm going to say release carriage because there's something else I want to do. I want to put a mark here. So I'm going to put my pen there and just make my mark there. And now I don't have to worry about sewing across the tape and, um, and I don't have to worry about losing my mark. So I've done that. And you'll notice I left everything clamped down before I made that mark. I, I didn't, I, I wanted all the tension to be the same when making that mark. So, um, so now I'm going to take this, my, my clamps off and take my sides off. And then I'm going to show you what I do um, to, to make sure that it's square. I, I, I forgot to show when I started out, but I had used this, this leader. I flipped it so that it's actually on the wrong direction so that it come, pulls up smooth. And I have these clamps here at the edge. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be doing when I advance it. So when I first advance this undo these and as soon as the edge gets to my ruler I'm gonna go ahead and stop it and I've got my little markers here that I want to put in place so so I've got that one and I'm gonna do the other one okay so now they're both, both in place there. And so I'm gonna push, push this back and advance my quilt. And I'm gonna do just a quick test um, just kind of rough just to make sure I don't have any pink showing so I don't so I'm good and now I need to make sure it's square for making sure I don't have any this is a, a very easy method for a small quilt so so I'm gonna make sure this is nice and smooth here and I'm gonna flip this up and now at this point I want to make sure that my edge is still lining up and if it's not I can kind of yank it a little bit so so that's that's when you use these markers you can just kind of 
kind of yank it a little bit and get it get it still going straight up there and then down here um, I need to smooth this a little bit and I'm going to take a pen and put through all the layers right there now that's got that marked and go to the other side and Make sure that this edge is, is right there at, at the edge of that clamp, and it is, so now I can, um, again, put a pin there. And that's going to hold that, and just going to put a few little pins there in the edge, because I'm not basting. So just that to kind of hold it there. Do one on the other side. Normally, I would be basting up, but because this is unique, I'm not. And I need to go ahead and put my clamps on. And this doesn't need to be real tight. It, it, needs, to, it, it needs to be somewhat loose because you don't want it distorting and, and pulling your quilt out. And actually, um, I should have probably done this before um, I, I did anything else. But we'll recheck and make sure everything is still good. So that's still good, that's still good, that's still good, and that's still good. So now we know that it's totally straight on the rail. And I can put these clamps back on. Actually, did I? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it needs to be. So now I'm ready to set set the ready to set the zone again. So I'm going to move my needle exactly over that dot that I marked. I'm going to touch there. And now I'm ready to pull bobbin. So I'm going to go ahead and get this over there near the area so that it doesn't have to travel as far. And I'm gonna um, say pull bobbin. But I do wanna show you something real quick. Um, because I'm gonna end without needing a partial row, um, this feature will not be needed. But if I needed a partial row at the end, I just wanna show you really quick how easy it would be. If for instance, we'll just say We'll just say I needed for the last stitch, if this were the bottom of my quilt and I needed it to end right here, all I would have to do for a partial row is touch those broken diamonds there. And it looks, it looks scary because it's pink and saying out of area, but that is okay. That is how this feature works. And at this point, now all I have to do is say pull bobbin and it's going to stitch this and it's going to do a straight line across the bottom without having to go into optimize. So that is a wonderful feature. And then it just toggles back and forth. So to take that off, all I have to do is, is touch the, the full size diamonds and I'm back. So that's a wonderful new feature in version 5. Um, but for right now, um, all I have to do is say pull bobbin. And then I'm ready to go again. So... Um, there won't be anything different that happens at the end, so I've shown you everything you need to know to quilt a simple pantograph that is not nested and that you don't need a partial row at the bottom. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this video.